reason is, is when they breed, he'll get one pregnant, yeah. and he'll keep chasing her around to breed with her again unless there's another one. Oh. So when you put three of them in his cycle, he'll breed with one, get her pregnant. When she's gravid, he'll do the same thing with another okay. one, and then he'll do the same thing with another one, and the first one will have had her babies and gotten rid of them, and he'll breed with her okay. again, basically. Why so you when you put them in a separate tank? Um, because when you get them in a big tank like this and you have so much going on, one, a lot of your babies will get eaten, okay. your numbers will be down. Um, there's a, there's a, some people in aquaculture, they actually farm their fish and they'll stock their tank with all males or all females so that there are no babies bred into the tank. Big tilapias won't eat their babies. When you have babies oh. in the tank, small ones, they'll eat the babies. So in a breeding tank, you want just a few babies that are isolated, but in a bigger tank, um, you more don't want breeding pairs in there if it's aquaculture because they're afraid they're going to overproduce and you're going to have ones of different sizes. You're going to have really large ones eating most of the food, and the small ones don't get as much food, so it takes them a lot more time to grow, and the growth isn't regular because it's dominated by bigger and smaller fish. When you have all the fish in the same size in the tank, at the same level and grow at the same level. Um, so we don't care about that so much because our main product, we're going to eat fish out of it eventually for sure, and we're going to be dealing with fish and all that. But we're more wanting the nitrates from them. So if we have large and small mixed together and they're breeding great, it's just more sustainability for us. Because we're not aquaculture in the sense as much as we are aquaculture. Once we have batteries and solar panel in here, then we'll have pumps on all these. This aquarium will turn into an aquaponics center. It'll get its set of pipes over it. Um, that one will be another one with pumps on it. So what these will be is fry tanks. We'll hold the ones smaller than this until they get up to this size, maybe until they're about two inches long bring them into these tanks and we'll screen it off into two pieces. We'll have the mothers breed in there, then we'll put a separator in there, let the babies get just big enough to become fry. After they become fry, we'll throw them into these tanks and we'll feed them, we'll get them bigger and bigger. And as they get to about two inches, then we'll stock those other tanks with them over there. I also, we're gonna do another thing today. I brought a throw net with me. I'm gonna teach you guys how to throw net. I'm gonna show you how I throw net and how we catch them out of the pond. We're gonna take some of those and we're gonna put them in here with these. We're gonna stock this a lot more, but you're gonna notice a lot more green growth and a lot more nitrogen in it as we put more fish in it. We've been just been waiting to get to the stage yeah, where we had something circulating. Yeah, they're yeah. Big. there's yeah. a few, there's a couple big breeders in there at the bottom. The water stays too cold in here for them to actually breed. So we want, what, what happens with this is it has a black back on it. The water will get hot enough in here eventually for them to breed. It has to get up to like 88 degrees. Um, if they don't start breeding in my smaller tanks here, We'll get them to actually breed or do whatever they have to do. And then we'll take another tank out in the sun that's hot and we'll actually move our breeding pairs out to there if we're not getting enough heat on the tanks for them to breed. But everything should start breeding all this next month. June, July, it's gonna get hot enough. Yeah. We should start seeing some babies come out of our breeders. And like all these are gonna be breeders as well. And I'm bringing a whole bunch more over in the next the short day. while here. We'll work with them all and give them better lessons on the throw net as we go too. A tiny little piece of crumb or something. Uh, yeah. granola bar. I got granola bar. <laughs> Perfect. What, what I need from you guys is I need you to back up so that we can get them up to the surface. Noise. Hey, Noe, carefully walk up here, please. Yeah, you're all good. You got it, Noe. But uh, the main thing is, like, uh, yeah, come on we want to move this way because the fish see us. And just like when, when we're throwing that in the ocean and we're trying to catch fish, if you ever watch the local guys, we're like this, we're sneaking up on them. Because the fish actually see you really well from under yeah. the water. We so what we're going to do, I hate to. <laughs> I know, you're like, oh, <laughs> There's lots of it. Okay, go. Let's just throw it I'm, I'm not sure. I'm left-handed. Oh, so I'm throwing it left-handed. So everything I show you here will be the opposite for you guys if you're right. -handed. If you're left-handed, you'll do it just like I do. Can you guys watch no, come, come, come up here, please. Come back behind me. If you're right-handed, you'll be doing the opposite. You'll be I'm gonna grab the net in my hand. I'm gonna take it about waist high. Put my hand in. I'm gonna create a circle with the net, just like that. Then I'm gonna switch hands. And I'm gonna hold it up. And I'm gonna take just a few of the weights like this, and I'm gonna separate some onto my shoulder. Then I have it over my shoulder. Then I'm gonna switch hands again.
our hand. Actually, do I have it upside down? No, I don't. Yeah, I have it right there. We have an on net just like this. I know. We have a couple of this. On the bottom, there's a skirt for it. So you want to make sure you're, none of your lads are like out or like this one. One's tangled with itself here. So here we go again. Waist high. According to how big you are, if you're smaller, you can make more loops in it. Like if you're shorter, you can make more loops in that. Grab it up to your hand, grab just a little bit. A couple of my leads are actually tangled here. This is a weird net. It's different from the ones I normally use. It has a different skirt setup on it. But I can still grab it like that. Over my shoulder. My hand up here and then I grab this under the bottom so when I throw I'm actually chucking off my shoulder and I'm holding on to this just the last second oh yeah you might have scared them right there actually no, I'm sorry it's all right it doesn't matter I think we're gonna hit them. I think they're underneath it okay. and I'm gonna throw right now one Because the water hyacinths, a lot of them, if they see you, they're just going to hide under the water hyacinths. Oh, there's the ones that are inside of it. See, so that means we've had breeding. We've, we've had breeding in here already as well. That's what that means? Yep. Yeah. The little, the little tiny ones. Little tiny ones that are jumping out are ones that have actually bred more. Uh, this is a female, by the way. Um, what you'll notice is they have a lot of rainbow color to them, a lot of silver. They're not a gray, ugly fish. They get really big. So there's something that is a good eating product to sell fish eventually, you know, to have a product and just something that's really good to eat. The gold ones are really nice. A lot of people like to eat beautiful golden looking fish as well. Ocean. This is how I eat most of the time, at least once a week. I go throw net um, between that and climbing coconut trees.